Oh, fuck. The fuck is that? Somebody needs to clean their fucking bathroom, nigga. Damn. Yo. Hey. What's up, fellas? This is your boy, Papa. Ryan J. Motherfucker. So, um, hey, today, I just want to do a, a little vlog. Damn, this is a fucking... Look, see? It is a fucking iPhone. Motherfuckers are like, he didn't film it on a fucking iPhone. Motherfucker. Hey. No, for real, I want to just talk about, um, my peacocking, you know? I want to talk about, um, how I peacock and exactly what is, what is that? So, obviously, I'm not peacocking in the least right now. Just, this is actually how I dress when I'm at the house. I'm just wearing, you know, my UFC fucking shorts, my workout shorts. You know, I usually wear a hat. I always wear shoes in the house. I got the some brand new Nikes right here, you know, and um, this is how I dress when I'm usually at the house, just hanging out, just moved into this new place, I gotta put some shit on the walls, and, um, but anyway, like, I wanna talk about um, peacocking, and uh, what exactly, what exactly that is, let me, let me close this toilet, so I don't look like one of those fucking people doing selfies in the mirror, and I'm gonna show you all my peacocking stuff, and uh, I think you guys are gonna like um, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna share with you and you can actually start using these techniques what I'm gonna share with you right now tonight you know right now after you are done with this vlog you can also go to like Party City and pick up some of the things that I use and um, you can go to uh, clothing stores and and um, basically uh, let's talk about really what uh, what peacocking is and um, so peacocking is like, uh, trying to, if I didn't have to hold the camera, I should have put on a selfie stick or something like that so I could talk and use my hands and shit. But um, peacocking is like uh, when you dress outlandishly uh, in order to garner female attention. So for example, like, you know, even, you know, th just these tattoos, that's me peacocking. You know, I have a tattoo on my face. Obviously, I'm someone of like high social status, I must be in a band, I must be a celebrity, like, because normal people can't get a tattoo on their face because then they can't get a job. Me, I don't need to get a job because I'm a published author, I'm a pro soaper, you know, I'm a, I have my own business as a dating coach, dating guru in Las Vegas, you know, I'm a best-selling author, you know, so I have money coming in, I don't need to work a nine to five. So. Just by a girl seeing like, oh, he's got a tattoo on his face. He's either a thug, an ex-con, or he's rich and has his own his own shit going on. Because like, you know, if I try to go get a job at McDonald's, they're not gonna they're not gonna hire me, you know, because I got tattoos on my face. I remember I lived in England and I couldn't get in any clubs because I had a tattoo on my neck. And they're like, oh no, you're a you're a thug, you know. True, I am a thug, but. You know, I got my own shit going on. But anyway, like, you know, just having these sleeves, just fucking, um, just that is like peacocking. It's just kind of, if, if you stood me up next to a row of a bunch of dudes, and then you have me with all these tattoos, like, I stand out. So, whether you like me or not, whether you respect me or not, your attention, you know, moves towards me. And so, you know, if I walk into, um... Let's say I walked into like, I don't know, a faculty meeting at the school, like a PTA meeting or something like that. You're going to probably see a lot of just normal people, people, guys wearing jeans, button ups, probably not tattoos. And then I walk in with my hat to the side, you know, I bang it to the, to the left because I'm, I'm from the West. I'm from California. So I walk in, I'm already kind of peacocking, like your attention is just, whew, what the fuck? And anyway, this, this technique basically comes from, um... If you look at like a, a male peacock, they, when a, when a peahen walks by, they spread their tail feathers and the peahen can kind of, can kind of look and she can see like, okay, this guy, it, it's basically a, like a courtship dance, a mating ritual. And she can see, okay, look at the, look at the way the feathers are, look at the eyes, are they symmetrical? And she can pretty much know like, this is the peacock to mate with or not, you know? 
And um, it's interesting about a peacock's tail feathers is that having this giant tail, this is a evolutionary adaptation over time, you know, because the, uh, the peahens are only mating with the ones with the biggest and brightest tail feathers, you know, proving that it's the best amongst the other males, the other male competition. You know, all the males there, they want to mate, but she's only going to choose the biggest and the brightest. And it's like that in, um, in the human world as well, which we'll get into. But basically, um, the problem is that that big tail doesn't, it, it's not a survival tool. It doesn't help the peacock survive, you know. But it proves that, let's say, uh, like a lion is chasing after it, and even though it has this big-ass tail, it still managed to escape and live and eat and breathe and, uh, and live its life and get away from predators, even with this big, huge tail. You know, the same way like I have all these tattoos, and I'm still able to socially dominate uh, the planet by becoming, you know, a published author and being able to to make money and be able to live you can see you know nice nice marble tiles and stuff I got money coming in I know well fed so I got money in the bank so um even with these tattoos even with people saying oh why well, he's got tattoos we're not gonna hire him I've still been able to socially dominate you know so peacocking theory in the PUA community the seduction community is um basically a tool you can use, you know, you can pick up girls, like I can go to the mall, right, just like this, wearing a sweaty t-shirt and, and a hat, and I still have the confidence to go up to, you know, beautiful women, I don't care how hot they are, they could be a 10, they could be a fucking 11, and I'm still gonna walk up and be like, hey, what's up, my name's Ryan, it's a pleasure to meet you, who are you, what's your name, you know, and I still have the swag, I've got the composure, the poise to be able to, to uh, arbitrarily choose a target, go up and, um, and chatter up, and you know, just by my, my way of being, I don't need to wear crazy clothes because, you know, I have a, that cocky, confident personality where a girl goes, this guy must be the shit for him to come up and approach me on the street and be able to talk to me as smooth and um, be able to, like, just hold my composure and just be able to talk to her like a person. So I must have some real shit going on in my life. And when we look at um, what's going on in my life, I have everything... Um, that can validate and back up my uh, congruency as a man and in my approach. You know, they can see, oh, shit, he's the best soper in the world. This guy's got all these things going on. Like, he really is a rock star. He really is the shit. So I can approach women like that. But, you know, so you could peacock and use it like as a crutch or a tool for a while. Or you could just do it as if you want. Or, you know, it's interesting in the club. If I walk into a club, I'm just another dude. You know, so what can I do to stand out uh, amongst the crowd, the other competing males? So what I can do is I can, I can wear like really outlandish clothing or I could wear like, um, you know, for example, a, a glow stick and I could put a glow stick on my neck and walk in the club and, um, you know, obviously red is the color that the eyes go to first. So I could wear like a red glow stick. I could wear a green or blue. It just depends on what you want. You know, but um, you can throw on like a glow stick and walk in the club and instantly girls are going to see you. And that's all it takes. It doesn't, you don't have to go crazy. Well, you don't have to wear, you don't have to tape 10 glow sticks to your arm and, you know, you don't have to go too crazy. Just one interesting item to make you stand out. And, um, of course, you want to kind of calibrate to, um, just checking if this is, is still on. Yeah, so um, you want to calibrate to the environment that you're in, you know. If you're like at a, if you're at a, like a business kind of kind of place environment, then you don't want to walk in crazy funky, you know, with a giant top hat on, like a big fuzzy top hat. Um, but you could wear like a suit with um with maybe some sequins underneath or you might want to wear a red tie instead of if every most people most guys are going to wear a black tie by default so maybe you want to wear a red tie or maybe you want to wear a it, it just depends on the on the situation that you're in for example like i have a bunch of if i do business stuff like i've got this cool cool little tie right here that um 
that has uh, this stuff on it. I have this funky um, marijuana tie right here, you know. If you can get away with it, you know, I've got my, my red power tie, that kind of thing. So uh, I've got a Grinch tie. This is, this is kind of fun. I like to wear this on St. Patrick's Day because it's green, but it's like, you know, the Grinch, it's fun. And um, so you could do different things like that instead of just being a, a carbon copy of all the other guys in the business suit with, a, with red ties and shit. Uh, I mean with black ties. So, um, but let's get into more of the club stuff. I'm, I'm going to come back here in a second. I also want to share with you some of my, uh, some of that seduction material. You know what I'm saying? Y'all guys don't know about, about this shit. You know, I got the original DVDs and shit. So, um, anyway, let's go in my little, uh, my little peacock drawer right here. This is where I keep, uh, some rings and different things, you know. When I'm in my tattoo, you know, I got a tattoo business and shit. So sometimes I wear this to kind of instantly convey, oh, he's a tattoo artist. Or if I'm out doing karaoke or I'm doing a show, I will wear my, uh, you know, my necklace. These are little things to help convey identity to a girl. You know, there's people that people know that I'm a fighter, you know. Um, got my soap, my soap key. If I'm out soaping, uh, this is kind of a lucky charm. This is just you know, clunky plastic shit from uh, Fremont Street, but this is kind of a lucky charm because a girl that I, a hired gun gave me this. And um, I like to, I like to wear this sometimes when I, when I go out and it reminds me of success just because it's like, it's Vegas, it's Dice. And the girl, the, the hired gun, that's a girl who's hired for her beauty. Like she was basically one of the, one of the girls dressed with the giant fucking um, peacock feathers gave me this and I ended up fucking her. So, um, this is kind of just reminds me like of success, you know. So um got my fucking uh some some nice bling bling right here if I'm in that kind of mode, you know. When I'm in my when I'm in my rap mode, I got some some bling bling right here. Different cool belt buckles and shit. This one's tight because it, it's like the 45, but it I can't I don't think I can spin it with one hand. Um but it Oh, there it goes. It, it clicks around. I, I, I need two hands to do it. Different types of shades. I'm really big into, like, sunglasses. I wear these at the pool. See, something like this is perfect for peacocking because guys don't wear heart shades, you know, because most guys are, they're scared of the social, the social backlash, the social repercussions that can happen. Like, if I wear, if I'm walking around the mall where I'm sitting at the pool at the Palms and I got these cool shades on, you know, um, I can floss this because I'm confident enough to wear it. And a guy could come up to me and go like, you faggot, why are you wearing that? And I'll be like, oh, you think my shades are gay? Well, they think you're gay too, you know? And I don't, I don't really care. Some, some girl could come up and she would go like, you know, where did, why are you wearing those heart shades? And I'll say, you know, there was this girl a few minutes ago. She was having a bachelor party. She just gave me, th me these. She wasn't really my type, but, you know, I'll just floss them. And she'll go, oh, okay, which makes me pre-selected. So now she's like, oh, other girls find him attractive enough to give him some shade. So he must be the shit, you know. I've got, um, I've got these, uh, these cool glasses if I feel like, you know, being studious. I could put on a suit and uh, I pick up girls in a library, you know. So every girl like wants a different type of guy. You just have to figure out what that is and you can become, you can become that guy. You know, I got, um, these are tied. These are my eight bit shades right here. These are fun. You know, if you're wearing, if you're at the right environment, these are pretty cool. You know, I got my, got my party shades that four loco. You will ever drink that four loco. That's, that's no joko. So, um, going deeper into this thing. Y'all seen the spikes before, you know. This is when I'm on some real shit. Uh, this is like my gothic part of my drawer. I got the spikes. I got this cool thing I put around my hand. You know, got some goggles. I'll show you the other goggles that I got bedazzled. $250 with bling all over it. Got some skull caps if I'm feeling gangster. Uh, or do-rags, you know. Spikes, chain wallets, gloves with the fingers out. It just depends on like my mood. Got these um like bondage cuffs. This is a dope ring that I wore into seven. It just has a cool 
cool design. I wore that on the cover of the seven. This is a you know, anarchy ring. So uh, yeah, this is dope shit. Just it depends on my mood, and then I got all the outfits and stuff to match that, like the vests and everything. I'll show you that shit too. This is my glow in the dark drawer. If it's if I'm like going to Tao or I'm going to the marquee. You know, like a nightclub or something like that to wear these glow sticks to stand out um, I got these cool snap bracelets y'all remember these from the 90s uh, this is actually what I wear when I go jogging I'll put these uh I'll put these snap bracelets on hold on a second let's see if I can uh, do this right quick you know let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can do this you know uh, one time oh yeah that's what's up right there yeah you wear those I wear two of these when I'm jogging with my Nike suit at the night, and I stand out like a beacon for beautiful women. This is fun. This is my girl, my ex-girlfriend, um, Michelle, made me this box. This is a cutouts of me on the on the magazine and shit. And we used to pass this around at the meetings, and guys would, uh, you know, put dollars in it like a donation box back when I was just charging like five bucks. Now I'm charging a lot more, obviously. This this drawer is fun, right here. Um, these are cool things that you can wear in the club, you know. Okay, and a lot of guys will argue. They'll be like, what the fuck? Like, I got this from some chick at a bachelorette party, you know. And I will wear this. I will walk around in the club with these, with these fucking, um, with these she-devil horns. And girls will instantly come over and be like, where did you get that? Like, right away it starts a conversation. We like to call this kind of stuff chick bait. Rather than, uh, you know, peacocking is like the overall uh, action that you're doing. But um, this stuff right here, I like to call chick bait, you know, because they'll come over and they'll comment on it, you know, oh, you know, girls want to want to fuck me just because like I got this candy and they'll try to get the candy off me. I'm like, oh, can I have a piece of candy? And I'll be like, I'll be like, I don't even know you, you know, but I might like to get to know you, you know, and maybe if we get to know each other, then maybe later you'll get some of that candy. So um, that's a great way to just pull them in. Ring pops, you know, a lot of guys. Sometimes I'm serious and I'm wearing like this kind of jewelry, like right? pinky rings and shit, you know, if I'm in that kind of mode. But sometimes if I'm like, you know, you might want to wear a ring pop, put that on your pinky and girls will come over and they will, they will lick it. Even if like 10 other girls licked it before them, it's hilarious. So, um, you know, got the, got the Sophia bubbles, you know, beauty and the beast. I sit around and as weird as, as it is, I'll sit around in the club and I'll just blow bubbles and they'll be like, what are you doing? Like get this from the wear this thing like you can get any of this stuff at like um party city and like for example like this one i bought it at party city but in the club you're gonna tell girls like oh that bachelorette party like that she gave me this or something like that i don't know she thought i was cute but she wasn't really my type you know you always want to appear like you're the selector like you had control in the situation stuff like this shit like vip passes you can pick this up at the clubs and just just put them on and then it makes it look like you were out partying. You put on like 10 different bracelets and then you go out at like seven or eight at night and girls are like, where did you go tonight? And you're like, you're like, oh man, we've been drinking since 10 in the morning. Like, yeah, she's like, oh wow. Like, so she thinks you're the party. And then she's like, she wants to roll with you cause you, you the man, you know, you're out there doing it and all these other motherfuckers like ain't doing shit. Um, this is a funny ass tiara, you know, little things like this. They're 99 cents, but you know, you just, just roll up in the club like that and act like it's no big deal. Like, just just floss it. And girls will come up and they'll comment on it. And the whole point is to get them to approach you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to make the approach. I don't have to muster up the balls or whatever and approach and deal with the approach anxiety. This way girls come to me and they'll comment on it, you know. You can wear different types of hats. I got this, this, this top hat right here. Um... You know, I got Santa hats. I got fucking um, earmuffs. This one's funny. I wear that shit in the winter because no guys wear fucking earmuffs. You know, most people will be like, oh, that's gay. But wear the earmuffs and girls will come up and they'll go, oh, those are cute, you know. And then um, I got uh, St. Patty's Day hats and that kind of shit. I'm going to go into a... Hold up right here. Um, let me pull this shit out of here. This one's fun right here. Uh, oh, it's St. Patty's Day hat. I got a snap bracelet. This is my whole, like, you know, I try to be ready for any occasion. St. Patrick's Day comes up. All I have to do is grab this hat and these, this green shit and I look like I'm ready to go. 
you know, a lot of guys, they show up to the St. Patrick's Day party and, um, you know, they're not ready. They're not wearing no green. They're no fun, so they don't get no girls. Um, this is all my candy drawer. Um, I make candy. Y'all know I'm a raver and shit. Made this from scratch. This glows in the dark, too. The white, the clear beads. Love this one. Love this piece. This glows in the dark. Slave to the star. Um, I got a couple vlogs on my YouTube where I teach you guys how to make this stuff from scratch. You know, I made I make all these pieces. Um... Or, or some pieces that, you know, girls have given to me, like EDC and that kind of thing. So, um, these are fun ways to, I, I like to make them and it's a great way to explain, do drugs, motherfucker. Yeah. Um, but I got all these, all this candy stuff, you know, here's, here's one of my favorite ones right here, you know, cause I'm a motherfucking rock star, baby. Oh, you know fucking camera died um all right so back to uh back to what we were talking about i think i had more light before okay so um yeah i was talking about the candy a second ago but uh yeah i want to show you some of uh outfits that i wear that kind of thing you know it's good to be ready for any kind of occasion you know if it's business stuff you know dress shirts you know with fashion you got to make sure if you're wearing a dress shirt you know a lot of guys they don't understand like for example here Here's an example of a work shirt, okay? This this shirt right here, you know, girls notice this stuff. See how this shirt has one pocket on this side, okay? That's not a club shirt. That's a work shirt. Now, this shirt, for example, this white shirt right here, okay? It has no pockets, okay? That's a club shirt, you know? And um, where's another one right here, okay? If you wear a white shirt with like one pocket, then a girl knows that you basically just came straight from work, from your job, and she knows you're blue collar. She pretty much can can estimate just by looking at you that uh, you probably make less than less than uh, fifty thousand dollars a year. She's probably gonna know that you're not very socially savvy. You're not fashion conscious. You don't know. You're a dumb fuck is what you are. Um, so you know you wear a a shirt like this. This is what you know because this is made for pins. Now. If they have a dress shirt with two pockets, that's good for the club too, you know. So if it has, if you're going to the club, make sure that you have no pockets or you have a pocket on each side. But don't wear, don't wear one pocket. Here's something fun, mesh. Uh, this is some crazy fucking uh, peacock and shit. This is my lucky, uh, my lucky shirt right here. I pulled more girls for some reason with this shirt. Uh, I don't know why. That's the that's the shirt that um that I did for the Seven magazine. That um, that I pulled the the that hot seven seven five number in a, in a minute and a half live in front of uh, the reporter from Seven. Um, there is a psychological principle to this. Uh, shirts with pinstripes up and down, they um, they open the visual cortex with women, and um, so for some reason uh, the the striped shirts, striped dress shirts again with no pockets or two pockets, will draw a woman's attention. And, um, you know, you want to pay attention to, like, colors and stuff. Obviously, red is where the eyes go first. Um, yeah, for example, this 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 shirt right here. This is just a nice, nice, uh, nice black dress shirt. It has a pocket on each side, okay? And it also has a um, shoulder, shoulder pads. Um, again, high social status when you, when you see those, uh, those shoulder pads. Shoulder things, those are cool. Uh, I shop a top, Hot Topic a lot. Look at this dope, uh, here's a dope ass vest right here. You know, that's kind of cool. Um, this one right here's got the spikes on it with a hood. So that's a cool little little vest. And I add like the, um, you know, the the cuffs. This is a dope, uh, dope jack. It has a little, little skull buttons on it, if you could see it. Can't really see it with the camera. Got some dope, uh, dope zippers lots of dope zippers it's good stuff for like the eyes to look at um i like the uh you know the way there's little details and stuff the more details you have with your clothes uh the better let's see um oh right here this is dope um this outfit's hella cool um this is like uh it's more costume wear but you know i i rock this out when i'm like I call it like, you know, when you have an alcoholic drink, they call it flagging it. 
if you put the like a garnish, like, you know, it might have a half flag if it just has a lemon, but if it has like a pineapple, you know, a cherry and a whatever, and a little flag, they call it full flagging. So if I'm like, if I'm on a big sarging event, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing a sargathon, 12 hour sargathon, and I'm gaming fucking tens, like I'll be rocking this. Here's the goggles right here. I got this bead dazzled. $250 right there. See that bling bling? And put that on and uh, girls can see me from across the room. And they'll come over and they'll go, oh, I like your goggles right there. And then um, I use a mystery method uh, opener. If any girl comes up and compliments me, it means she's attracted to me. You know, there's no other reason for her to say like, to come over to make the effort to say, hey, I like your goggles. So then uh, basically what I'll say in reply to that, I'll say, hey, I appreciate that. Um, you're very lovely as well. Tell me, what do you got going for you other than your looks? Okay, so basically I'll say, okay, you're very lovely too. Thank you for the compliment. I'll compliment her back and then I want to find out what, what is there more to you than meets the eye? Okay, I got uh, tailored suits. This is a full-on fucking uh, $300 cashmere um, overcoat, you know. This is, uh, you know, the full-length full length one, like the Matrix and shit, but it's, it's thick cashmere. Keeps me real warm in the winter so I can, I can game. You know, game is... I, I like it. I like going out in the winter more because you can dress up. I would rather wear pants and a in a in a some kind of jacket or something. I like to be in more clothes than less clothes, unless I'm at the house like this. Uh, right here, let me move this, move this shit out the way. Um, yeah, these are different belts and stuff. This is kind of a cool belt with the with the bullets and shit, with the microphones. If I'm out doing uh, doing music and shit, these are my lays. You know. These are great at like a first Friday event or I like to wear these, uh, you know, at parties. Just throw on something like this and go to a house party. Just just one or like uh, this feather boa right here. You know, girls uh, you just wear something like this in the club. And, and most guys, most straight guys will never wear a, you know, a feather boa because they think this is gay. But I'll walk around and girls will ask, they'll come up and they'll say something like, nice boa, like, are you gay? And then I'll go, let me show you how gay I am. And then I take it and I flip it over around their neck and then I pull in for a kiss. I made out with a girl whose boyfriend was in the bathroom by doing this technique. She came up, she's like, are you gay or something? And I was like, let me show you how gay I am. I flipped it around, just went in for it. We started making out and she's like, oh, I get, like she was all surprised. And she's like, but my boyfriend's here. And I was like, that's cool. We're just hanging out. You know, it, it, it doesn't count. It's in Vegas. You know, you're probably on vacation. She's like, oh, okay. You know. Chick logic is funny. I fuck girls uh, wearing a wedding ring and they've straight told me that, uh, well, you know, he's being mean to me and I'm in Vegas, so it doesn't really count. And so, all right, whatever, you know, as long as I can uh, put that notch in my bed, it counts for me, you know. Uh, these are more beads and shit. Uh, fuck that four loco. That was an event that we went to, but uh, a lot of beads. Sometimes I will just wear all the beads and I'll go down to the strip and it looks like I was again with like wearing all the bracelets it looks like I was partying all day because why would I have so many beads no one would actually store up a bunch of beads or go to the go to the dollar store where you can buy these like a whole bundle for a buck or you can get them at party city for cheap and just wear a big stack of beads and it's like it's, it's status you know and um it's not like I didn't have to do anything for beads I just wear them and then I go out and then people think I'm partying all day so I must be an exciting interesting guy like oh he, you know he's the party i want to follow him so that's something you can do and this is an old scarf from uh from the navy my letterman jacket you know i don't uh my martial arts shit my black belt my ninja outfit the tactical vest here's my robe my fucking uh from the from the religion the robe my you know that shit's fun it's like um if i'm doing like some kind of We'll get into that another time. Uh, let's see. Soap, shoe, shit, you know. Uh, I got my own clothing line, you know, that I'm working on. Johnsonmas got the hoodie. This is my, uh, you know, number one, of course. Ryan Johnsonmas right here, right there. It's autographed, too. Might sell that or give it away to a fan. I don't know, you know. Um, this is all my skating attire, you know. Jinko jeans, if I'm out soaping. A lot of cool stuff in here. Um, you know. So my 
my cool pants that my, my ex Michelle got me. Looks like her dog, her old uh, the boxer that we that we had Jesse. Um, it's like what I like to wear when I'm chilling around the house and stuff like that. You know, good jeans, designer jeans and shit. Um, and some other shit over there. But uh, yeah, man. So it's good to like kind of just throw on the whole outfit. Make sure this is still taping good because the last time it fucking died. Uh, oh, shoes, shoes. These are all my soap shoes and shit. Nike Airs. My different soap shoes and shit. I like to put put pads in your shoes. Not just for comfort, but because it'll give you more height. You know, girls stuff their bra to get bigger tits. So you guys can you guys can put padding uh, and arches in your shoes to give you guys an extra inch or two of height. You know. Let's see my soaps. Yeah, these are dope right here. Slow bro plates. These are my ninja shoes. <laughs> um, what else we got up here? This motherfucker. I haven't unpacked everything from storage. All my dress shoes are not here. These are house slippers and shit. Um, I don't know where my dress shoes are at. It's good to wear... Um, I don't have them to show you right now. But it's good to have um, good good dress shoes. Don't get the... Um, these guys go and get like Stacy Adams dress shoes at like Ross or Marshalls for $39. And, and that's cool if that's where you're at, if that's your budget. But girls do notice. Girls can notice the difference between a real tailored suit and a Walmart suit. Or the suit that you get at the fucking um, the Goodwill for five bucks. There was a there was a buddy of mine. He got into the PUA shit, and um, we were going to like a a model release event at Caesars. So there was like a runway models with with girls that are legitimate nines, tens, and elevens, the hottest fucking girls on the planet. And um, you know this guy wanted to go with, and I was like, man, I didn't want to roll with this dude because um, his fashion sense is fucking horrendous, and. Um, I was like, well, we're all going to be like in Taylor's fucking suits. You know, you got to have some, you got to step up your game because otherwise we can't roll with you. You can't, you're not going to, you're, that guy would bring us down, you know, the masters and shit. So, um, he goes and he went to the fucking Goodwill and got a suit for like five bucks and came back. And, um, it was a, it was a, it was basically like a refurbished second hand. It still was brand new, but it was like. Walmart shit. You could tell it was like the way that it was cut was flat and um, it's not like tailored to his body and so it made him look sloppy and um, you know it just it lowers your value and girls can tell the difference between like dress shoes versus the like the $200 dress shoes that you would get at Macy's or um, the stuff that you get in the mall that has the designs or the you know the alligator skin and the there's different cuts of the shoes. Some will look like elf shoes. Some will have pointy. So you got to, I do a whole lecture on fashion and stuff. I'm not going to get into that, into that here, but, um, you know, you guys got to understand what women are looking for, you know, and stuff like the accessory in the club, you know, a lot of girls, they're not necessarily looking at, you know, what you look like aesthetically. They're more like, how tall is this guy? Look at that watch. Is it a real watch? Is it, um, you know, like they're looking for little little cues of of your income. They want to know what you're worth. You know, they're looking at your teeth. They're looking at um, they're looking at your shoes. They're looking at the cut of your pants. They're looking at um, you know what's on your wrist. What kind of accessories? Your chain. You know, your charm on your chain. Um, they notice. They notice everything. You know, I wear a lot of stuff. I, I wear a lot of earrings too. I got these, the white gold and, and, and diamonds and shit. And um, let's see what else I got here. I got a whole bunch of earrings in here. Um, oh yeah, this this is fun. Glitter spray for your hair, or uh, you can do stuff like that. Again, the bubbles, the bubbles. Just stand around and fucking on the strip blowing bubbles, and girls will come up and, and talk to you because it's. It's just weird. You don't see that every day. Glow in the dark hairspray. Uh, this one is good right here. This is glitter. Put this in your hair and there'll be like glitter. And you don't really notice it. It's very subtle. But then like if you're close to the girl, she'll start seeing all this glitter in your hair. And she's like, is that glitter in your hair? And you can either play it off like, yeah, you know, it's just for fun. It's for a party. Or you can be like, I don't know. I was making out with this girl and she had like the glitter 
and I guess it got off, uh, rubbed off on me or something like that. And she'll go, oh, okay. Um, anything else? No, I guess that's it for now. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys can um, go to Party City today and start buying some interesting items and, and just wear them out and try it and see uh, what kind of reactions you get from women. And um, there's all kinds of different things that you can do. Oh, here, one more thing I want to show you. This uh, this is a uh, this is a dope little fucking technique of mine. Um, so a couple years ago, back in 2009, I went on a cruise uh, to um, to Catalina, and here's the pin. But there's no date on this. It just says uh, a whole new world under the sea, discovery tours, whatever. So uh, this thing's still on, right? Okay, cool. And uh, I'll just put this pin on. And I wear this when I go to like a lounge, like Eye Candy Sound Lounge at the um, Mandalay Bay, and um, the quality of women isn't the best there, but it's a great place to, to warm up for the night and um, do some uh, warm-up sets, warm-up approaches, and just kind of flex that social muscle, but just wearing that pin, I'll just wear a nice button-up shirt, nothing flashy, no glow sticks, but it's just that pin, and girls will walk up to me and they'll ask me like, what does that say? And I'll say, oh, I just got back from a cruise, because... Well, from their perspective, they don't know that it was in 2009 and it's 2016 now. You know, it's, it's old to me, but it's new to them. So I could say, oh, I just, I just got back from this cruise. I went to Catalina. And they're like, oh, wow, really? Like, so obviously, I, basically, what a woman is looking at is what you're conveying when you speak, not the logical sentence of I went on a cruise. She's more thinking, oh, so he must have money to be able to afford that type of lifestyle to go on a cruise. Okay, I'll keep talking to this guy. What else does he got? And then... So it's a way to display value. Yeah, I just went on this cruise. Um, and then I'll start talking about like, yeah, it was me. And I was basically, there was like 20 of us there, obviously. And when I say, you know, because there really was, um, it was um, it was a singles group that I went there with. And um, there was about 20 of us there. But she doesn't know that it was a singles group and I didn't know any of those people. She just assumes, oh, he's got a lot of friends. So he must be well connected. He must be a person of some kind of importance or significance. So they, oh, yeah, well, there's like 20 of us there. And um, it was pretty cool because um, I got a special suite on the 11th, um, on the 11th deck because I'm a former military. So I got like 10% off right there. I just, oh, I'm former, he's a former military guy. Oh, this guy... Mm, high social, higher social status, like, so little things that I put into the, into my stories, they demonstrate personality for the girl, now, now she knows, oh, he's got a lot of friends, he's got money, he's former military, uh, yada, 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 and, and you just, you want to embed these little DHV spikes into your stories, demonstrations of higher value spikes, and um, also you want to use like invisible thread theory, so, for example, um, you know, you can, you can put on any one of these types of, um, you know, if I just walk around with this little duck thing right here, <laughs> and I just had it around my neck, and you came up and you go, what's that for? You know, there's a conversational thread attached to it. You don't have to fix it up. And for me, um, I, I got that at uh, Disneyland. I went there with, uh, with an ex-girlfriend of mine, and um, blah, blah, blah. So right there, all of a sudden, I just conveyed to you, I'm pre-selected. I have other beautiful women in my life, former girlfriends. I went to Disneyland. That's an expensive trip. I've got money. Uh, so you want to you wanna have a conversational topic or what PUAs call a conversational thread attached to each piece. Like each one of my tattoos, they're not tattoos I have because I'm trying to be cool. They all have stories. Like, you know, you see my, my soap shoe tattoo right here. I got a big story to go along with that. This bud leaf, you know, I got a, a story to go along with that. DNB, she says, you know, she says, well, what's DNB? Oh, that's this hip hop group I'm in. You know, we got a website, we perform live, blah, blah. Oh, oh, he's, uh, he's, he does gigs, blah, blah, blah. Like every one of these, every one of these has a, a story attached to it, you know? Uh, so each piece of each interesting item, you can't just put on a bunch of random shit, you know, and not have a way to explain it. You have to, um, the way that you wear it, like even, even I could wear something like this is obviously not real jewelry. This is, uh, these fake plastic dice, but I have a story about how I got them and how I was out with, uh, with a buddy of mine on Fremont and we were 
you know, the girl put these on me and I ended up, we actually ended up dating and blah, blah, blah. So then she says, oh, okay, he's got friends. He goes out, he lives an interesting lifestyle. He must be attractive to other women. If he has legitimate value for other women, he must have legitimate value for me. And so each each piece should have a, a cool little story or a, or a gambit or a routine or a conversational thread that you can attach to it. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna cut this short. And uh, yeah, go out and try, uh, try, um, try the technique. Try to try to peacock a little more. Try to, um, you know, create an image that represents you and what you do and what you're about. And then add a little flair to it. And um, you know, remember that. Uh, remember that people are going to make fun of you for it, and you have to learn how to stand up to that social pressure. Guy comes up, I don't like your shirt. Cool. It doesn't like you either. Anyway, and keep going. Girl says, um, you know. Why are you wearing that? You know, uh, you can either tell her a, a DHV story attached to it, or um, you know, you could just be like, "Cause that's what I'm doing. What's up? What you doing?" You like, and, and, and just completely like cut her thread and, and create a new thread. So, and, oh, and if, and also people will ask you who know about this technique, who watched VH1, the pickup artist, they'll come up to you and they will say, "Are you peacocking?" And you go, "Yeah, it works, doesn't it?" And they'll go, "Yeah." So. As, as long as you don't go, oh, oh, oh my God, I'm sorry. Don't apologize for it. Just be like, yeah, this is me. This is what I do. If they say, are you peacocking? You go, yeah. What do you think? Does it work? Hmm, yeah. If she says, no, it doesn't work, it did work because otherwise she wouldn't have talked to you. So you can go, oh, well, I guess I'll try better next time. How's your day going? She'll go, oh, I'm, I'm good. And what's your name? I'm Amanda. Hey, Amanda, well, let's go get a drink. It still worked, even if she denies it. Anyway, Soraya J. Peace.